The following stories are from members of Hanmam Church in South Korea. They aired on a Korean Christian TV network called C-Channel and were dubbed in English. Hello, I'm Estella Park from Hanmam Church in Chuncheon. I had many shortcomings and I was always making mistakes. Wherever I went, people didn't have anything good to say about me. I thought nobody liked me and I didn't like myself either. I lived being oppressed by thoughts like that. Then I met the risen Jesus and came to have a life of delight, not oppression. I'd like to share my testimony with you. My parents immigrated to Argentina due to their business and I was born there. I'm the youngest of three kids. When I was little, I was outgoing. My parents loved me a lot, and even if I made mistakes, my older sister and brother were the ones who got scolded. But something happened that made me start becoming a timid person. I was attending a Korean kindergarten, and one day, I wet my pants by mistake. My teacher must have been very flustered by that because she scolded me severely. When I think about it now, I think I was deeply shocked by the fact that I had gotten into so much trouble for a mistake that didn't seem that serious to me. That was when I began to become timid about my words and actions. I didn't want to get in trouble for making mistakes. Ever since I was little, I was very clumsy, and I didn't know how to do anything. I liked eating out. I especially loved hamburgers. But every time we went out for hamburgers, I would spill my Coke. I spilled my Coke so many times that my sister would say things like, aren't you going to spill your Coke today? Or, she's going to spill it in three, two, one. (laughs) It was to the point where she could predict the exact moment I would spill my Coke. My sister said it was embarrassing and teased me for spilling it all the time. But it wasn't like I wanted to spill it. The more I tried to be careful, the more nervous I got, and I'd just make a bigger mess. With every mistake I made, big or little, I felt like people made fun of me, were fed up with me, and were bothered by me. I felt upset and ashamed by that. One time, I was learning tennis with my sister. I'd taken lessons for a year, but no matter how much I tried, I couldn't hit the ball. My instructor even asked me if my eyes were bad, though I had excellent vision. He told me to focus and keep my eyes on the ball, so when he served me the ball, I focused and kept my eyes on the ball just as he said. The problem was, that was all I did. I didn't swing my racket, and the ball hit my eye. In the end, my instructor was completely fed up with me. No matter what he tried, I wasn't making any progress, so he even told my dad, Why are you trying to make her play tennis of all things? I give up. I think she should try another sport. I wanted to play well and get compliments, but instead I kept getting in trouble and being scolded, so I ended up quitting tennis. Well, it didn't really matter if I wasn't good at sports when it was just a personal hobby, but it became a problem when I had to be part of a team during PE class. When we were playing dodgeball, no one wanted to be in the same team as me. I had no choice but to end up joining the team with fewer people in it, and the kids on the other team would say, Throw the ball at Estella. She's the weak spot. (laughs) Then my teammates would say, We're going to lose because of Estella again. She's no help at all. Then I just wanted to leave, but I forced myself to stay. Things weren't any different at work. I worked in a realtor's office answering calls and greeting clients, but I had trouble remembering their faces. Even if an important client came, I couldn't recognize him, so I was causing delays and getting in trouble with my boss. Then one time, a very important call came into the office. Since it was an important message, I was asked to give it to my boss immediately, but I completely forgot about it. My boss was extremely angry when he came back to the office and demanded to know who failed to give him the message. That was when I finally remembered that I was supposed to tell him. In a tiny voice, I said, It was me. Then shaking his head, my boss said, Just what is it that you do in this office, Estella? Do you know how much money we could have lost just now? I can't believe this. This is just unacceptable. After that, even though I was a manager, I was like an invisible person. My coworkers didn't talk to me about any task or problems to be taken care of. Even my boss didn't talk to me directly. More and more, he was telling me things through my coworkers instead. If someone seemed to need help and I offered, I was told, no, just sit there, that's how you can help. 
but I was afraid that they'd scold me and look down on me even more if I just sat there doing nothing. So I ran errands no one asked me to run. I even washed the dishes. As time went by, I felt like my co-workers took it for granted that I was doing errands and washing the dishes, and that they looked down on me even more. I pretended that I was fine on the outside, but within, I felt really irritated and thought, they're making me run errands because they think I'm a doormat. I couldn't work, I couldn't establish relationships, I couldn't do anything there, so eventually I quit. I thought that if my appearance changed for the better, people wouldn't pay attention to how clumsy I was and that I could be more confident. I started wearing makeup and new clothes. I also dieted and exercised excessively, and I lost all the weight I wanted to lose. But even though I lost weight and tried to get along with people, I didn't feel good inside. I still felt like my family and the people around me would think less of me if I made mistakes, regardless of whether I looked nice or not. I felt like no one loved me just the way I was, and I felt alone. Because of these thoughts, I was going outside less and less. No matter whom I met, I didn't feel happy. I just stayed home, and sometimes I would cry all day. Sometimes I did nothing but watch TV. I didn't want to do anything, so I didn't clean up, and I didn't wash. My church friends would call and say, let's go to church, or let's eat out, but I stayed holed up in my home. I fell into a deeper and deeper depression, and every single day, all I thought about was how I wanted to start over as a different person. My circumstances weren't changing, but it wasn't like I could change myself. I thought, why did God make me this way? Why was I born to be someone who's so lacking in so many ways? Then one day, one of my church friends contacted me. I wanted to die, but on one hand, I also really wanted to live. I felt like I really could die if I didn't go this time, so I mustered up my courage and went to church again. Even on my way to church, I was so frustrated that I kept praying desperately for God to save me. I didn't know exactly what my problem was, but I prayed for Him to really save me, to help me. I must have looked like I was having a very hard time because one day my Bible study teacher at the church asked to see me. For two hours, my Bible study teacher shared the gospel with me. He told me that sin was not believing in the risen Jesus, that this was the basic sin. He told me that I had to repent this sin and accept Jesus as Lord, that that was how all my problems could be solved. When I returned home, I kept being reminded of how I had to repent my basic sin. And I thought, but why? All I ever did was get scolded at, get yelled at. I'm the victim. Nothing's going well in my life. I was so frustrated, and I wanted to know what my Bible study teacher's words had meant. That was when I began to try to understand what this basic sin was. Then I happened to talk with a friend, and she told me that I could see my sin through the resurrection. That was when I realized that I had to focus on the resurrection, not on sin itself, and started to think about what the resurrection was about. I started reading the four Gospels. In the book of John, it said that Jesus had done many incredible miracles, like turning water into wine, walking on water, and raising people from the dead. But the disciples, who had followed Jesus, didn't once confess in Him as God, and I was really surprised to read about this. How could they have been with Jesus for three years and seen so many miracles and still not believe in Jesus as God? But they clearly had been martyred for Jesus, so how were they able to become martyrs? I was curious as to how the disciples, who couldn't believe in Jesus and had run from the cross, had been able to become martyrs. As I kept reading, I could see that they had changed in the face of one incident. They had met the risen Jesus. The moment they had met the risen Jesus, they had realized that He was God, who had come to this earth as prophesied. And not only had Jesus risen, but He had appeared to them and spent time with them for forty days in His risen body. He had been with the disciples, showing them His nail marks and where the spear had pierced His side. Thomas had said he couldn't believe unless he saw for himself, and Jesus had told him to touch the wounds for himself. 
then I was reminded of the verse that said that only after Jesus had risen from the dead did they believe in the scripture and the words Jesus had said. When Jesus' resurrection became such a clear reality to me, all the words in the Bible became reality too. I had thought that I hadn't sinned, but I clearly saw that I was the one who had thrown God away and lived however I wanted. It seemed like God was saying to me, I died for you. I rose again for you. No matter what mistake you make, no matter how unfairly you're treated, who is the Lord of your heart? I truly had nothing to say to that. I had gone to church with my parents ever since I was born, but my life had had nothing to do with Jesus. I had thought, my entire life is unfair, but I'm patient. I live being a good person, and I haven't committed any terrible sins. However, I had turned God away, and I'd even turned His Son away. That was eviler than any sin I'd committed in this world. I had pretended that I was honest and righteous if people thought well of me or if nothing bad was happening in my life. But when I made mistakes or when I had difficult circumstances, I felt so unfairly treated and irritated, and I would throw God away. I heard Peter's cry in Acts 2 as the very voice of God. This Jesus, whom you crucified, the heart of wanting myself to be glorified, hating to be looked down on, wanting people's admiration, wanting to be higher than God and living only for the glory of myself, this very heart had made Jesus die. <laughs> the God Almighty had died because of my sin of turning Him away. That was such a shocking and terrifying fact. But God had raised Jesus back to life so that He could become my Lord, and He had been waiting for me to repent. Even if I fell into hell this instant, I would have nothing to say. I was more wicked than the devil, who wasn't going to be forgiven. But God was telling me to repent, and in the face of such a love, I had to repent. God, I repent. I threw you away and I didn't believe in Jesus. I repent this heart. I'll never live however I want again. Please, I only want you to be my Lord Jesus. I'm sorry. I'll never be the Lord myself again. I confess this with all of my heart. Amen. When I came to believe in Jesus as Lord, the words, the truth shall set you free, became a reality to me. Personal relationships had been so difficult for me, but I felt so free in them now. I had always been anxious and self-conscious because I was afraid that people might look down on me and say things I didn't want to hear, but now I'm not bothered no matter what anyone says. I happened to meet some friends for the first time in a while, and they were incessantly chatting about how clumsy I used to be. For a moment, I almost fell into despair as I thought, why are they talking about that? Are they making fun of me? But through the resurrection, it was clear to me that I was no longer someone who became oppressed by the eyes and words of others, so I was able to enjoy myself and have a good time with them. In the past, I'd always been afraid that my friends might think I had a lot of shortcomings and not like me, so I was self-conscious and nervous around them, trying to please them. But now, I feel comfortable when I'm around my friends. Whenever someone gave me advice, I would just feel like I was getting scolded. So I felt offended and my pride was wounded, but I'm not like that anymore. One time, one of my church members asked me why I hadn't been writing testimonies lately. At the time, I was having trouble praying and taking in the word, so at that moment, I grew afraid of her. I felt like I was getting scolded, so I cried. But now, I know that she had asked me that because she loved me, so I received words like that with gratefulness and without misunderstandings. Also, as I was praying, 
I was reminded of my older sister. I thought that my sister was always looking down on me and scolding me, so I never tried to think about how hard it might have been for her because of me. She must have wanted her younger sister to not make mistakes and become a better person, and that was why she had wanted to tell me things. She also must have wanted to have a relationship with me, but I'd only cared about myself and not about how she felt. I apologized to my sister from the bottom of my heart. I became free in every aspect of my life, and I just had to share the good news with others too. I happened to visit Argentina again, and God let me meet so many people there. There were so many souls whom I hadn't noticed before because I had been too busy with my own thoughts and feelings. There was one soul I met who had a similar problem to the one I used to have. She had also been hurt a lot by other people, so she was very self-conscious. It had been a while since I had last seen her, and as I listened to her talk about each wound in her heart, I really desired for her to not live the life I had lived and be free. That's the heart I had when I shared the gospel with her. Now that I've believed in Jesus as Lord, work has become a joyful place. One time, one of my co-workers made a mistake and was having a hard time about it. I knew how terrible she must be feeling, so I helped her with work and accepted her just as she was. She opened her heart up to me, and we spent a lot of time together. Eventually, I had the chance to share the gospel with her. I told her about how I used to be and how I came to meet the risen Jesus. After we had fellowships with the gospel for a while, we came to part ways. As we said goodbye, she thanked me for telling her about Jesus and the Bible. I'm so thankful to God for not only restoring me at the workplace and in personal relationships, but also letting my workplace become a mission field. Amen. I will walk with the Lord who allowed me this joyful life as a witness of His resurrection, bearing our mission. Thank you. If you'd like to see more stories about how the gospel changed lives, visit us at facebook.com slash HMUOnlyJesus or Google us at HMUOnlyJesus.